Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back down to the dungeon. You know, I was just thinking about this the other day. Those of you that have been with me for a while, you probably understand that I've been doing these videos. God, for a long time now. I can't even go back how far I'm doing it. Now, all of a sudden, you see all these other quote-unquote geniuses, experts, coming to you from their office and coming to you from this one and that one. All I'm saying is, been doing this a long time you've been with me a long time here in the basement glad to be back here with you let's talk 8 8 round two um boy some of outstanding games in round two i don't think there's any question let's start up top northern bracket loyola at stevenson game of the week game of the year could be um great matchup these two very very familiar with each other obviously and I think the most surprising part of this game is, is seeing it being a, a, a round two game. You just don't expect these two this early. But here we are, talking round two. Um, to me, the intriguing questions in this ball game is going to be, number one, how can Stevenson do trying to move the ball against a very good Loyola defense, which generally is the same question every year these two match up. But I think the other most intriguing question, to me, is a Loyola offense. Um, you know, uh, you've got Aiden Walsh, your quote-unquote third-string quarterback, which I know the press keeps referring to him as that. By this point, you're the starter. So just, he's a starting quarterback now. Did a very nice job in the second half against Warren in the win. Can the offense stay consistent and put up points while the defense hopefully slows down Stevenson? I, I think that's the question. Again, if, if you're looking for an upset, I, I'd take the Ramblers here. I, I think this game could go either way. Kiri gets by Taft, and again, I mean, comparing Kiri to Taft is 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 not not real hard to do because Kiri is just battle tested in the Illini Conference. Taft coming out of the Chicago Conference in the CPL. Well, we saw what happened in round one with the Chicago Conference team. So uh, again, but Kiri, generally a very solid team. I just think Nutrier, big offensive line, they're going to pound the football. I don't expect a wild score out of this, but again, I expect Nutria to advance. Um, Glenbard Weston Palatine, hey, got to give a shout out to the Mid Suburban. I know myself included, everybody else seems to be down and dissing on the uh, Mid Suburban this year, but Palatine as well as Barrington both advance. Huge wins. Question here is, is how well can Palatine match up really to me with the quickness and the physicality of Glenbard West? It's something you just don't see every day, and I don't think you see very much of at that level in the mid-suburban. We shall see, hey, mid-suburban, I've dished you all the way till now. Why should I change now? And then taking that into consideration, Barrington at Main South. Now, I find this one could be maybe a little bit more interesting, maybe a little bit more closer. Barrington offensively very good all season. I love Scotty Miller, a uh, big-time play receiver. Could be a factor. This could be a shootout between the Hawks and the, and the Broncos. So this one's going to be fun to watch. Down South. Neighborville Central at Wabonzi. We know Wabonzi gets by uh, uh, Mate Valley to advance. Um, you know, in Naperville Central, which Naperville Central team is going to show up? The one that trailed the Brother Rice in the first half last week or the one that just came out completely on fire? If if we see the second half Naperville Central team the rest of the year, Naperville Central could repeat as an 8A champion. You heard that here first. Simeon at Hinsdale Central, to me, may be one of the most intriguing games of all in 8A. Um, Wolverines, very good team. Do not overlook them. Do not count them out at all. Playing at uh, Hinsdale Central, never an easy thing to do. The Red Hawks, very solid, very consistently good team. Central's going to have problems, I think, up front with, with Simeon's size. I mean, it's a big, strong Simeon line play, especially Simeon's offensive line. When it's all said and done, Simeon has to execute. They have to play a clean game, keep the penalties to a minimum and the turnovers. If Simeon can do that, then ball game on. Otherwise, Hinsdale Central should win that one. Oswego at Bolingbrook. Biggest concern for me in this ball game is going to be Oswego versus Bolingbrook's team speed. This is not the fastest of teams this year in Oswego. Uh, but again, well coached. will come out and play very hard, very physical football. Now, Bolingbrook has seen that this year. Can they get the offense in gear enough to score points? And, and again, will the defense show up? I think we all kind of assume the defense will be there. It hasn't been the issue at times this year, so we shall see another great game on Saturday. And then finally, Homewood Flossmore on the road at Edwardsville. Again, just two top teams. Which HF team are we going to see this week? Is it going to be 
the team that can just play lights out offensively, able to slow teams down defensively, or are we going to see the team that just gave up some wild points in a handful of games this year? Uh, Edwardsville, very solid, very good team, some talent. Playing at home is always a huge advantage. This, I mean, honestly, you could flip a coin. It could go either way in 8A. So there you go, my take on round two in 8A. Later.